Happy Friday, guys, and welcome to another episode of Let's Talk Dubs. I'm your host, Bill T. While I'm back, back in the USA after two weeks of being up there in the UK, and we got a podcast being released from Let's Talk Dubs British Invasion that we did and kicked it into Volk World 2023 and sat a bunch of people down and had some podcasts. So this week's no different. We're going to have another podcast that we recorded out there at the Volk's World Show. Again, big thanks to Paul Knight and Jolly Jim, Spike, all the guys out there that pulled for me, Russell Ritchie, the guys that kind of connected me with Volk's World to get me a spot up there at the top floor, being able to do some podcasts with these guys. So we've got a lot of good information coming out. Make sure you support our sponsors if you like this podcast. VW Trends Magazine, a magazine for the people, by the people. Don't forget to follow Dan Ledbetter at VW Trends Magazine on Instagram and find out where he'll be as he tours the country and be one of the lucky people to get a lifetime subscription to VW Trends Magazine. So expect a lot more to come from VW Trends Magazine. Subscribe today at VWTrendsMagazine.com. That's VWTrendsMagazine.com. Also, if you got a cool logo, something you want to put on a shirt, some embroidery work done or whatever, go check out my guys at you logo Up. That's ulogoup.com, the letter U. Go check them out, submit your artwork, get a price from them to make some cool VW gear that you might like. Or even if you got a softball team, whatever you got, go check them out, ulogoup.com. And this weekend is going to be Buggerama in Phoenix. going to be the last race. I wish I could be there. Unfortunately, I've got family things that are in the way, not to mention just getting back from two weeks out of the country. It's kind of tough to break away right now so uh it, but you know what you guys won't see me out there but you know who you will see you'll see ross wolf out there go by their booth let them know that you heard about them on let's talk dubs if you haven't checked out their products they've got a ton of really cool stuff one of the things i really like about those guys is that they've got this uh drain plate the drain plate full seal kit the drain plate full seal kit comes with the ross wolf billet machine drain plate and it comes with a viton gasket new studs the whole kit together no more paper gaskets on the bottom of your motor a reusable viton gasket like they have in the modern cars no more oil leaks coming from your on the bottom of your engine case so go check out the guys at ross wolf they'll be at the phoenix buggerama this weekend so stop by their booth tell them you heard about them on let's talk dubs go check out their stuff i assure you you'll pick some merchandise up and also check out the reviews on their website the reviews are unfiltered Go check them out at rosswolf.com. Also had the guys over at Volks Gear send me some gear this week, some pretty cool merch, a couple shirts. If you guys want to check out their uh, their website, go to check out myvolksgear.com, myvolksgear.com. They got a bunch of different VW attire and uh, use the code VG15 at checkout and save and get free shipping. So go check those guys out if you're looking for some more gear, some clothes and stuff to add to your collection. They got some pretty cool, unique product as far as uh, shirts and whatnot go. So go check them out at myvolksgear.com, myvolksgear.com. On today's podcast, I've got Gavin Jones. Gavin Jones is proprietor for trailer queen restorations now trailer queen restorations is one of the top shops there in the uk doing so just phenomenal paint work and he started out as a young lad working for a ford dealership and he's got a great story he's also a member of gfk uk so uh, we get to hear his story this week but he's one of the guys that's up there in the uk doing big things and a lot of the really nice cars that you see finished out there are are done by trailer queen restoration so it's good it's a good podcast he's got a great story Actually, Russell Ritchie convinced him to come on the podcast. You can tell in the beginning he's a bit nervous, but after a while, we just get into it in the flow of the conversation. So it's a great podcast. I know you guys will enjoy it. So without any further ado, guys, let's get into it. Gavin Jones, Trailer Queen Restorations, coming to you from Volks World on Let's Talk Dubs. You probably don't know that there's a new Volkswagen out that doesn't look like a Volkswagen. Okay, everybody, so we are back again at the British Invasion, coming to you from Volks World 2023, and I'm tracking down the heavy hitters here across the pond, and right now on the podcast, I've got from Trailer Queen Restorations, Gavin Jones. Yeah, Jones. Welcome to the podcast, Jones. I love it. <laughs> I hear big things about Trailer Queen Restoration. What? 
and you, I'm not sure if you've listened to the podcast, and uh, he also happens to be a member of GFK UK, right? Yeah, yeah. He's done a lot of paint for a lot of really influential people in the VW scene. Some of the background guys, the heavy hitters, people you might not, you, you know, but you've never seen, but uh, that's what he's doing, a lot of restorations. But the way we always start the podcast, Gavin, What's your VW story and how did you get into Volkswagens? Um, I think initially, probably the same as many people. It's, uh, you know, you probably had friends or family that have had one. You've grown up around, been in, absolutely loved it. Um, so, yeah, I mean, Volkswagens have always been exactly that. We've had family and, and uh, kind of always been around them. And then, you know, get older and... Um, my first three cars were minis when I passed my driving test. Um, and then the cow, the, the back to 89 cow look, uh, kicks off in the, in the UK. And what year is this? Ah, uh, 80, probably 87. So 1987, yeah. the cow look thing's getting super huge out here. Bug yeah. jams are going, yeah, all and, that and, stuff. And at that time I was 17, so I just passed my driving test. Um, so my first, as I said, my first three cars were minis. Um, and then my next door neighbour was selling a, a Beetle. And so I, I, I snatched it up. Um, what year? It was, it was a 73, 1303S. And a lot of, <laughs> and, and so I just learned yesterday by, we, I've got a friend of mine who's really into Super Beetles, and he just educated me last night at dinner okay. and told me that. Because in the States, they were just Beetles and Super Beetles. Right. But I understand that here they were 1303s. 1302. A, thir- a 13. 01, 1302, 1303. 1302, 1303. 1302 is flat screen. Right. Um, so 1302 is the first of the Super Beetle. It's a flat screen Super yeah. Beetle. And 1303 is a round, round screen, Super right. Beetle. Yeah. So that was sort of 73, <clears throat> 1973. And, and, and what's interesting, we talked about recently with a couple of guests that we've had on here, that the, the evolution of the change in the hobby, right? When we first get into it and you know, we take whatever bug we can, because from an outsider's perspective, they all look the same. Yeah. And yeah. then once we're kind of brought into the fold, then it's like, hey, uh, look, Gav, we like the 73, but you're gonna have to get a <laughs> you, when do you When do they have that talk with you? You're gonna have to get a 67 yeah, earlier. Uh, to be fair, I didn't really, uh, it was a Volkswagen, um, and it wasn't until you get to the scene, the, the shows, and you realize it's, you haven't bought the white Volkswagen. <laughs> but, but, but it's an interesting dynamic, right? Because yeah. we, we want more people in the hobby. Yeah. And I and that's why I'm a big proponent of like I don't care what you drive as long as it as long as it's cool and you put some style into yeah. it I love it and then like I said my buddy we'll just refer to him as my buddy is really pressing me on the Super Beetles and I'm starting to get a fondness for him you know so Beetles where was that yeah it, it, uh, listen <laughs> there's one downstairs for sale right now yeah. for 19 grand the, really? the German looker I want that I want that bug but the steering wheel's on the wrong side so. Um, other than that, I wouldn't. But I'd actually love to figure out how to get a beetle like that in the states because they do a proper German looker here yeah. in the UK. Yeah, yeah. In the US, I don't know if I've seen to date a proper German looker, which to me is like where it's at for a super beetle, right? If you're going to do a wow. super beetle, get a get a German looker. So you get the '73. You, you come to your VW show like oh, I can't wait. All these guys are going to see my car. Yeah, yeah. They're going to put me on their shoulders, hip hip hooray! Like and you but show yeah, up. I mean, you 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 start off in a smallest town, go with a few friends, very young, you meet other people, uh, most of my friends at the time had split screen uh, uh, buses Mm -hmm. that were just hanging apart, Uh, but it was cool because that's what it was, that's what it was all about, Yeah. Um, and then you quickly realise that you've got the wrong car, (laughs) (laughs) and then spend the rest of your life trying to get the right car. Um, And and so, pause one second. And so now, how does that go down? So you, you roll to the show, you see this, and the guy, and you finally figure out, like, okay, I gotta, I gotta kind of lace this thing up right and get an older model. Uh, yeah, but it's not. It was. It wasn't as um, as sort of strict as that. I think it's uh, back then. Everyone, everyone's just having fun. Sure. And as long as you're at Bug Jam or whatever you're at, it, that's all it was about. And. Uh, and did so you, no, there was never there was never any peer pressure to get something different. But in your own mind, you're like, I like that, I like that '63, I like that small window car. What's different about that one? But and, you know, and you're learning, you're learning. Every time you go to the show, you learn 
something new with that. And when, in your, on your first bug that you had, did you do like a full restoration on it or you just kind of had a, a driver? It was a driver um, for about six months or so. And then um, I think I took it for an MOT, which is uh, a safety check for UK roads. So give me, because a lot of our listeners don't know what the MOT is. And you yeah. pull that microphone a little bit closer. Yeah. The MOT, what's involved in an MOT when you take it there? Give me an, uh, just an overview of what they so you, So you, they um, basically put it on a ramp and check it for road safety, road um, sort of just make sure everything's safe. Like and, they drive, they, they put on rollers and drive the car? Yeah, they do a, that to check the brakes and they check suspension, they check for rust, they check for rust around um, safety points like seatbelt points and anything structural. Um, if it's got any rust in it, it fails your motor and you can't drive it. And everything here pretty much has rust on it. Everything. <laughs> so, so you get this, which is why I've got a business. Yeah. And and so you, <laughs> so you get this, you get this car. Yeah. You take it in for MOT, and what's the results? Uh, yeah, it, it was yeah, heater channels and inner wings, and like inner, the inner worst, fenders. The, the worst thing you want, like you, you like you take yeah. it there knowing, yeah. and you're hoping maybe the guy had yeah. eye surgery the day before. Or maybe he's not paying attention. Oh, or maybe can, he'll feel sorry for you. Oh, you can just give him some money. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I know a place where that's normal, and that's called Mexico. <laughs> but but uh, no, no, so I'm asking on a, on a serious note. Yeah. Back in the day in the USA, I heard rumors that you could get a fake smog if your car didn't pass smog. You could get fake and ones in. So the, I was just curious. Yeah. So here, so now the technology has changed to where... You can't really like, especially with new cars, hey, with the ODB do and all the ODB two and all that stuff. Everything's a lot tighter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah back yeah. in so, the day, so yeah. So back you, in the day, you would know someone who could really get you. you could know like Phil. Go yeah. see Phil, and he'll pass your car. Yeah, yeah, wow. exactly. But I did things hard way and decided to restore it instead. <laughs> so yeah, I put a heater channels and floor pans and door skins, and, which was so. And this is before you have a job restoring cars. No, no, I, I started my apprenticeship part in, yeah. So you decided, like, I, I'm, I'm a car guy. I love cars. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. want to start doing car restoration. Yeah, I knew, that, I knew that from probably juniors. And so where, where are you working at this time? Uh, I, I started in um, my local full dealership. Um, okay. Proper apprenticeship at 16. Um, 16 years old, I, I went straight into that. Doing collision and repair work yeah, and body work? Yeah, accident repair. And, um, and uh, so here's a question that I have. Uh, it, on a typical 10-year-old car, they come in for rust repair at the dealership or no? They just buy a new car, usually like cars that are that new? Yeah, I mean, uh, I think it's the same world over. Like, the, the, any main dealer will push to sell right, you. Just a, trade it in. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah so yeah. we we was always working on new stuff. Um, I mean... And really, body work in, in like a dealership is more replacing panels. You don't have, I mean, you yeah. may have to section yeah. a front front yeah. core support or something like that. Yeah. But for the most part, it's mostly panels and painting and yeah. prepping yeah, and stuff that's like right. that. I mean, I, but I, my um, job and apprenticeship was, was strictly paint. Just paint? Just paint, yeah. We had two two sides to the workshop and, um, and yeah, so I was just a painter. So you, you take your car home and you're like, that's it. I'm doing the rockers. Yeah, that's yeah. A, no small feat. <laughs> had, had you learned how to weld at this point? Um, I need a college. Yeah. yeah a college. So you really kind of cut your teeth welding on your particular car. Yeah. 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 So you, you get all your channels, all the stuff welded in and you build the, at that point. Now you're going to build the car. Yeah. 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 So, um, so yeah, I mean, I changed it up a bit. I put, um, different wheels on it. Marathon. VW wheels, mm -hmm. um, lowering a thirteen oh three at the time. There wasn't much around, so, so I didn't have lowered struts and all that stuff. No, I cut I cut my struts and uh, lowered the, lowered the springs on the front, nice. so it had no suspension. Well, you know, listen, um, <laughs> you gotta, there's a cost of being cool, yeah. And sometimes it's gonna yeah. be losing the fillings in your yeah. teeth, but um, and yeah, so it, yeah, painted it the original color, which was marigold, um, marigold. Oh, the marigold color? Yeah, yeah. Nice. So um, you repainted the original color. Yeah. So it's a curved windshield Super Beetle. Yeah. And what wheels are on it? Marathon. What are the uh, Marathon wheels? So it's a, it's a light blue metallic special edition. Yeah, special edition car. I don't know if it was just Europe or 
Oh, okay. So but they, they were so much like a, it's like a steel wheel, but it's got some holes all the way around it's it. Like, like almost a looks like a steel MP8 spoke. Oh uh, yeah, ish. yeah. Uh, now I know. Now I know what you're, um, I know what you're talking so, about. So yeah, put them on it um, and painted it, them. And so you and you, this was all based on like budget, what you could afford, stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. And I was I was very lucky to be able to do um, to do stuff at work. I used to do a lot of um, jobs for my manager who had a, a drag team. Um, so I used to paint his and a lot of his friends' dragsters. Oh, nice. And a lot of the time, staying after work or going in weekends. But in return for that, he'd let me do my stuff. So you get the Super Beetle done. Yeah. And then at what point, like, what's your next steps? Like, you get the Super right. Beetle and you're like, I really want an early car. Yeah, so, so then um, I had it on the road for four days. And I drove to Volkswagen. Uh, Bug jam, mm-hmm. and swapped it for a Super Beetle convertible. <laughs> I'm like, wait a second! You swapped um, your Super Beetle for a Super Beetle? Yeah, I did. I did. But yeah, a Super Beetle without a roof. Was um, there a long play on this trade? On this trade, or you just got you were smitten when you saw the Super Beetle? Actually, a little funny little story. Um, there, there was a uh, importer of Californian cars in in central London. Uh huh. And on visiting my brother, we used to drive past this place, and all they had outside was um, convertible bugs, 70s convertible bugs mainly. Uh, this, this particular time, I stopped to look at them, there was a row of 10 cars ish. Yeah. And I took a picture of the end one, this Miami Blue 1303 convertible. And, uh, and then, oh, must have been six months later, I finished my 1303, took it to uh, Bug Jam. And took a photo of this car that I wanted to swap with. And I got home and I looked at the pictures and it was the same car. So six months apart, I've, I've ended up with the same car. Really? Yeah, so it's, yeah, it's a bit, bit, bit of a weird one, really. Um, and what do you do with the convertible? Lowered it straight away. Yeah. Uh, wheels? It had GT wheels, so steel GT wheels on it. The cross yeah. wheels with yeah. the, a little bit wider. Yeah, so six inch. Um, GT wheels, um, lowered it, same as it did me, me gold one. Right. And then um, just drove, drove it for a year and a half. And during this time, you're getting further and further along at work, more and more into painting and doing that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I probably um, I, by the time I started to restore the convertible, I finished my apprenticeship. Um, and now you're a full-fledged painter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now you you get in the booth, you suit up, yeah. and they bring you the car, it's prepped, and you spray it out. Um, yeah, yeah. So you're not Long doing the, the, I mean, the, uh, let's be honest, the worst part of doing any kind of paint work is all the prep. We, like, had, to, we had to do prep and paint, so it was a, we, got, we got our jobs from the I panel. I probably would have quit. From the panel would've. guys, and then <laughs> did the job start to finish up. I mean, it takes, a, it takes a level of patience to, pr- to prep and like... Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Like blocking out a car, mm, that's not a job yeah. for me. I got, I'm, I'm too uh, short attention span. But uh, <laughs> so, you, so you get now, you're, you advance from an apprentice to a full-fledged painter. And is it, you did your car, now you got the Super Beetle. What do you end up with, the, after the Super Beetle, what do you end up with? Or how um, far do you take that? Does this one need restoration and all that stuff, or it's a California car? It was a California car, but I ended up doing a full resto on it. And, and change, changing it completely. Really? Uh, yeah. Um, it was actually, at the time, uh-huh. uh, again, being a, a 1303, a lot of people said I'd wasted my money <laughs> um, in, in restoring it and putting money into it. Um, but at the same time, it's still known today. That car? That car is still known today. What, and and uh, Was it featured? Yeah. And what, what year was it featured? Uh, it was April... Um, April '93. April of '93. '95. Oh, no, sorry. April of 1995. So yeah. it was featured. Front cover. Of the, the cover of Volks World. Yeah. Rad. Yeah. So that's. I mean, that's like uh, as guys growing up. I mean, I'm assuming we're close to the same age. Yeah. I'm 26. Yeah. So I don't yeah. Know I'm, I'm 27. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so, yeah. but I think I was. Uh, our generation is like the magazine really kind of just puts a pin in it. Like, yep, I did it. Because yeah. we grow up looking at these magazines like well, one such a, day. Such a massive achievement for this little painter from a full body shop. You know, it's, right. it's 
Yes. So, so does the does the feature in the magazine push you to start your own shop? Does it affect? Do, do all of a sudden people start ringing you up, or it's just a personal? I thing? mean, you, you, yeah, you get you get people last year, but I've, I um, I did I had a good job. So you had a good job. You weren't looking to do anything. Yeah, no, no. And, and as I said, like, it was a, it was a very um, two way thing. If I got to do my stuff, yeah. Why leave? Right. You had a good thing. You got a yeah. solid paycheck. No, no, no reason to leave at all. I, I actually stayed at that job for thirteen years. Oh really? Um, and then um, went to work for another full body shop, and I was there for probably eight nine years before starting my own company. So I've only ever worked for two two full body shops. So what what triggered you to start your own company? <laughs> Having an argument with um, with the office staff, giving out the work. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, and you kind of got to the point where, like, listen, I'm going to tell you one more time, let's not do this this way again. And then they called your bluff. They thought, well, we'll tell this. Who's this paint guy? Think he is? No, no it, was, it was the opposite, actually. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh, I. Uh, should I say this? <laughs> Kick the office door in, and um, and uh, over. The actual story is he wouldn't let me go to see my my son's school play, um, who was in. Um, the very first year of school, right? And Which was is a pre- was a, a pretty big deal for your kid, and yeah. you want to support yeah, yeah. him. Yeah, yeah, But at the time, I was um, at the time I was getting into six in the morning till six in the evening, having no lunch break, grinding you out. They're just grinding yeah. you out. Uh, it was it was all bonus. So the more I worked, the more and, and right. But young still, family, the, you, you, you do it. You do sure. It. So and uh, so in, in, in this one day, I said, um, <laughs> I'm having a lunch break today. But I need to take it an hour earlier because my son's in the play and he said I couldn't do it. And uh, we had a bit of an argument. And, uh, <laughs> and um, Well, yeah, you kicked in the door. I like that move. Um, and then I went to my manager, who I really got on with at the time, um, and he said, oh, I've got to back the office. And so I went away. I said, all right. And I left the office and I come in the next day and I put me notice on the desk and I left. And you thought, you know what, I can just do this on my own. Yeah. I don't, do you know I don't what, need... I've run, I spent an afternoon ringing half a dozen people, six people, and um, I had a year's worth of work. Um, and then I found a workshop and, and started from the that's, that's Trailer Queen Restorations was born. Yeah. And what's exactly. the first car? Because starting a shop like that, right, one of the things is, first, you can't do it all by yourself. you got to try to yeah. build a good team. And if you're yeah. doing it by yourself, it's it's tough because it, it's there's so much to do. Yeah. You know what I mean? What's uh, what's your goal when you start a shop? I just want a steady income and I want yeah, I I, I to be, you know, we all want a steady income. But now that you're doing your own thing, you want to be known for doing, like, I want to get my name out there. Yeah, obviously you want to come to shows like folks on the show and Bud Jam and stuff like that and have, get recognized for what you do. Um, and what year What year is this that you start Trailer Queen Restorations? So that was 90, uh, no, 2003. 2003. Yeah. So you kicked that off. What's the first car you debut? Um, Barn Door Deluxe. A Barn Door. <laughs> Why not, right? Yeah. Why not go for the top, right? Yeah. Um, and I, I literally, I, uh, I've done a, Bare metal repaint on a Barn Door Deluxe right hand drive. Yeah. And um, I swept, the day it went out with the customer, I swept up and then left hand drive line came in. Really? Yeah. So it's, so like, it's like two just holy grail. Yeah, that's incredible. And I mean, listen, there's one of my friends who's a painter, my guy Buddy Hale back in I the States. I like Buddy. I've met Buddy, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, after he did my Type 34 Gia, well, then he did another one for, um, uh, his name escapes me, but he told me, I'll never do another Type 34 Gia again. <laughs> They're a nightmare. They're Because the, when you're doing panels, buses and bugs, they're mostly flat panels, a little bit, you know, some arcing and stuff like that. Um, have you done any so, Type 34 Gia's? So my third job was, was a Type 34 in, in Pulse. Three, five, six silver. Really? Yeah. Which now lives in, in Australia. Oh, does it? Um, yeah. Brilliant guy called Mick. Yeah. Uh, he from London, um, but uh, emigrated and took the car with him. Nice. Yeah. And so you you come out of the scene the first, and then how's the first car that you finished? How's it received? It won't best to show. 
Best of Show. Yeah. You know, that's similar to like a band comes out, their first album <laughs> is great. Yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? And you maybe set the bar pretty high. Yeah, like Kings of Leon. <laughs> you're like what happened, what happened? Kings Amazing of first album. <laughs> exactly <laughs> right so so your first car your first car out of your shop comes goes best of show and then are, how difficult is it for you to assemble a team to work with you or are you working by yourself no, no it's, it's just me just it's you just me yeah and I'm, and my wife oh she helps you she um when i first started out she helped in between working and and uh, obviously look after the kids and doing the school runs and stuff like that. And, um, but she used to come down after all that and help. Wow. Um, so, yeah, she's, she's, she's been there from the start. Oh, yeah. Um, and, uh, listen, we can't do it without awesome <laughs> women, right? Because, I mean, my, my yeah. wife's here. She's sitting at dinners where a bunch of geeky dudes are talking about Volkswagens. Yeah. And she's just she's just there to support. And, I mean, listen, if we if you can find a good woman that, that'll back you up in anything you do, you can get, you can get a lot done. You oh, know? yeah. My first workshop was... 35 miles from our house. Oh, good grief. So she used to do all the school runs and, and work a part-time job in between school hours and then drive 35 miles to help me. So. Well, I drove seven miles here in London and it took 45 yeah. <laughs> minutes. So that sounds about right. I can only imagine how long it takes to drive 35 miles yeah. with roundabouts and goat trails and whatever they have over here because it's, I mean, it's not like... Uh, Speed cameras. Yeah, 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 yeah. So... So you, and I'm pretty sure, I, now did this, I'm assuming this barn door got some heavy coverage? Yeah, yeah, it did. It in did. the magazines? Yeah, and then it got, uh, and then it got sold. Um, got sold to a guy who did fishing, and he used it as his fishing bus. No, he did not. He did, honestly. Yeah. He was a, a London businessman who'd done pretty well for himself and bought it as a, as a recreation <laughs> Um but then um, it, it went off the scene for several several years, and um, within the last sort of five six years, someone else has bought it. Have you seen it since? I've restored it again. Again. Yeah, I painted it again. Someone else did the metal work, um, but it was a, as I said, it was a, a, an early restoration of a barn door bus. Right, and you're um, lo- and you're looking at it, and it was restored to the standards of the nineties. Yes. Which is yes. completely different, and you know the panels weren't available, so a lot of the, a lot of the bits were made, like the cargo door skins, and so it was all handmade back then and stuff like that. But it, the second time around, it, it got done properly. Nice, um, and I got to paint it again. Is it? It's kind of weird to see the first thing you painted, right? Because in your it head, is, it is. it's like the first girlfriend. She was perfect. You meet her, you're like, ah, oh, no wonder why I broke up with her. You know what I mean? Like it's, yeah. it's a completely different reality because you look at it, but in the same respect. When you look at uh, when you look at cars like that Rodbuster, the Gia, yeah, yeah. And when they flew it to the Bilberg show in Sweden, the car froze in the plane, and the big the paint chipped off the roof. A big oh, piece no, right. of paint came off because the metal shrunk. Right. Right. The car was built 1987, 86, 87. That happens. Unbelievable graphics on the car. Right. They bring the car back to Bakersfield and they redo the bodywork to 2011 standards when yeah. they did the car. And it's like back to bare metal and they metal finish everything. Because back in the 90s, it was more like get it close, fill it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Yeah. It's really like, eh, the rule of thumb is like, you know, a nickel thick, a thinner of uh, fillers kind of okay. Yeah, things, things progress. Right. But you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. And, and I, but I don't know if things progress. I think it's the hobbies change because I still think in body shops out there, they're gonna be okay with a with a nickel's thickness of filler, you know, like in a, in a typical body shop where you go take your, your Chevrolet or your BMW to get yeah, repaired to the yeah. dealer, they may, I mean, over there, it's just new parts for everything. Right. But right. I mean, I think if you go to an average body shop, I still think the tolerance for them is a lot lower than the VW world. And, and that's how much has that change changed how you do work like what's the first car that you see like so comparing to your barn door what's the first car you see featured in a magazine or somewhere where you're just like that's mental like i've got to do now i've got to change i've got to raise the bar like anything that you see any car in the timeline of your vw hobby that you see that tells you the bar has been raised um yeah i mean I mean, there's, there's, there's certain cars that 
early days of, I've like looked up to um, Russell now owns the black um, square bank. Oh yeah, uh, Bob's Bob's old Bob's, square bank. Yeah. yeah. So um, looking at that in a magazine, it just blew me away. Right. Um, and the ultimate paint job is is black. I hate black. Uh, but it's, I mean, it's beautiful, it, but it's like yeah. you breathe on it and scratches. But I think I think for a painter, um, you know, if, if you want to get noticed, do a black car. Well, that's what I noticed with Ian downstairs. Uh, not Ian, uh, Ira's paint. His son's got a black car. Irv, yeah. yeah, yeah. Irv, Irv. And I said, yeah, of course you'd pick a black car. Like yeah. the world's most. Yeah. But, but again, a black, especially in the lighting downstairs. Yeah. The lighting downstairs doesn't hide anything. It doesn't do any favors for anybody's paint jobs. No, no, no. I think it's more no. critical. It's easier to walk by a, sh by a show car outside and not see half the flaws yeah, definitely. on it. Yeah, I mean, uh, like fluorescent lighting will show everything. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, um, so I got approached by Paul Meadows from Type 3 Detectives. Yes. I've uh, been friends with Paul since the very late 80s. Um, again, it's one of them, you go to a show, you meet new people, he was part of the crowd. Um, known him and loved him ever since. And uh, he, he came to me one day and he said, I, I want to do a square back. Um, I want you to paint it. And I was working at a film dealer at the time still. Um, so that this car probably kicked off my career, my own company, I would say. So it got you some name recognition out there yeah, in the world of builders yeah. and painters. So, um, so yeah, Paul, Paul asked me to do this car. He said, "I'm not sure what color." I said, oh, "Black. It's got to be black." And I and he he had thought about the color, um, but I think me saying it as well was like, "Let's do it." And this car, well. Um, Ivan at the time was... It's featured, it's featured in Volkswagen, I think I remember the car. It's yeah, phenomenal. featured in Volkswagen. Yeah, um, yeah. It did get a small feature in um, Hot VWs. Um, I'll go to the front cover, but it's Hot VWs. It's my first feature in Hot, v Hot VWs, so... Now, how does that make you feel to get your feature in Hot VWs? It's amazing. I'm, Over I'm the just, moon. I'm just this little painter from the UK. Um, and I've got a car in an, Amer in an American book. That's you know, I mean, it's pretty awesome, right? I mean, yeah. you, you feel like you've reached a pinnacle of success to yeah. some degree. Yeah, 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 definitely. Um, but this car went on to... So Volkswagen shot it, um, and I had to shoot it in two different locations because of reflections. Um, it's the first car I've ever had to do that to. Really? Um, and the paint was just literally mirror finish. No, no, I mean, I flatted it with 1,200 right through to 1,500. Um, Polished it, probably spent a week polishing it. Yeah. Flattening it, like colour sanding. Um, done it in base and clear. And it, this car was amazing. Um, so amazing that it ended up selling to JK from Jamiroquai. Oh, really? Yeah, he had, it, he had it for a brief period. So I think he had it for about a year. And I always find it interesting, right, when someone like that buys a car and you think like, do you know what you're getting into? And then part of you <laughs> cringes because you think this guy's just going to take a terry cloth towel and wipe this car uh, down. Do you know, he, he, um, J, JK's massively into cars. Is he? Yeah, yeah massively into cars. And, um, he's got a big country estate in Oxfordshire in, in UK and he bought, the, um, he bought the square to take his dogs around the estate. In. Come on. <laughs> so, uh, a, I don't know what's but, worse. The yeah. barn door for fishing. No, or, know, I'm I trying know. to think a little differently about yeah. the English over here. <laughs> no. Yeah, yeah. No, that's uh, funny. Yeah, no, I'm a bit uh, crazy. I guess. So did you end up did you end up meet, getting to meet him? No, I didn't. No, I didn't. Because it had been good to, to slide and say, listen, Trailer Queen, yeah. don't question the name, just bring me the car. If you want a car <laughs> built, here's Trailer Queen. Yeah, but JK's into uh, early, early 911s and yeah. stuff like that. He's got uh, RSCs and all sorts of stuff. So and then still today you're a one man shop. Um, no, I'm my wife. I mean, with with your wife. Yeah, she, but she's full time. So she has she, been. Is she like helping you in the shop, like blocks in and cars and doing yeah, stuff like that? Yeah, really? she does. She does a uh, filler work. Um, she now, does, as I look at my wife across room, like uh, Megan, Megan, get glove up. <laughs> no, she 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 literally <laughs> is. The only thing that uh, when we first when she first came into mm -hmm. the business to work, um, she wanted to. Um, she wanted to learn welding, but I didn't want to let her. Um, mainly because of the burn marks I've got all over my arms. Right. Um, I, I don't know. Um, just didn't, didn't want her getting hurt or burnt or anything like that. Um, 
So she, but she does everything else apart from paint. So how, how is it working with the wife? <laughs> Can I just say she was, uh, and she's probably going to listen to this, but she was, she's a very good salesperson in yeah. her, her, her career. Yeah. Um, but she came to work for me and she, after two weeks, she tried to tell me how to do something that I've been doing for 20 years. And uh, yeah, it didn't go down too well. <laughs> I well, think, I mean, I think there might have been a little bit of a argument. Yeah. So, but but you guys, I mean, obviously, you figured out how to make it work because she helps you, and it's just the yeah. two of you. Yeah, yeah. And so it, it, it's different now, right? It's your hobby. It's a family-run business. Yeah. Yeah. And it's kind of, you, you know, you're, you're all in, right? Like you're you're committing to see these things and get these cars done. And do you do just paint and body, or you do full assembly and everything? Uh, no, I don't get involved in um, in the refit. So you're just spraying, you're just pre- uh, building, paint, body work. Yeah, but I, I mean, uh, just along the way, I've I've also took on sort of um, full metal work now. Um, oh, so full metal. Yeah, and and that game has changed quite a bit. Very much in the last. Yeah. Well, it's funny, my uh, my pal buddy down there in Phoenix. Yeah, if you've saw the heb that they're doing. Uh, they're going to touch the, overboard on the metal finish yeah, stuff I've in the pictures. I've, I've been following it. What? It, it, so I'll give you a little backstory behind that. Sorry, buddy. Someone made a comment on Instagram that he doesn't that they don't know how to do metal work. Oh, really? <laughs> and then that kind of said, "It's great when it happens." Yeah, yeah. That, that's really <laughs> that's irritating to me. And so he decided to not just post pictures of metal work, but show metal work that like no, like he's going over the top with metal work right. every time you see an instagram post it's like some new the brand new tool that no one knows they yeah. made yet yeah, to, yeah. to help you do metal work but i think it's gone you know with down the down the way with you know the heb mullers and the dns's and all these cars like this i think metal work is something that you got to have in your wheelhouse because when you start doing you know cars that are costing fifty sixty thousand dollars to paint things like that there, you're going to be getting the most difficult challenges because people are going to invest that kind of money in a car that brings that kind of return. Yeah, you know what exactly, I mean? exactly. And I, I mean, along the way, uh, like I said, over the years, things have changed. Like um, early on, probably when I first started my business, it was on the inner fenders, uh, underneath, right, underneath fenders and stuff. You would smooth, fill over any um, spot welds, so it's totally smooth, flat and polish. Um, or colour sand um, mm-hmm. so it's all just as good as the outside of the car but over the years people want to see spot all the welds. weld marks all the tack weld so, marks yeah. in the factory I mean, so it's... now uh, now as I, I, I will go out of my way to if I'm restoring a car and putting on a, a bumper hanger uh, I will make sure that the original spot welds are replicated um, I'm actually doing a, a 46 for us um I've actually counted and measured where the spot welds are on the front valance and the, and the uh, inner tray. Now I'll ask you this question: <laughs> on, on, the, on those so, little bit of OCD, probably on, on those on those splits, the early cars. Do you see working on those and like a '64 a, a huge difference in quality of build on Volkswagen's part? Yeah, yeah, massively. Like he, yeah. I'm, I'm on a split windows. I've seen a lot of the super early cars, like especially the 38. Yeah. It's real popular. You see the quality workmanship, and these were prototype vehicles. The technology wasn't there, no. so it, uh, it, it may even almost be harder to do an earlier car because you can't make it too nice. Not exactly. That's exactly what we're doing on this car. I mean, that's it's, um, how do you keep it from? I mean, how do you rein that in? Yeah, it's difficult. It's, it's difficult. Because in your I mean, head, especially if you're OCD, yeah. you're going to be like, uh, man, and, but the factory had booger welds. You know yeah, what I mean? No, like, I, I struggle. I struggle. Uh, <laughs> and, and, and again, my wife wheels me in. <laughs> yeah, well, because, because you, you might weld it and it's yeah. it's splattered similar to the factory weld, but yeah. it's not the same and you're you're having an aneurysm over it. You know what I mean? Like, But it, it's definitely interesting because... It's like the deeper you get into the, the early cars, the lower the quality of the factory. Yeah, I mean, you might, you, might get a, you might get a flange to a, that doesn't quite fit right and they've pushed it over to, to try and make it fit, you know, and, and where they've sort of got some clamps and batted it over. And, right. 
clamps it tight and everything. Yeah, it's so that, things like it, that. Because I noticed with the, with the early cars, difference. with the early cars, they do a lot of flat paint. Yeah. yeah. You know, and flat paint, until recently when they started making purposeful flat paints, it was tough to get a flat paint yeah. to, to lay right. You know what I mean? Because when, it it's, I mean, it, when it, it's flat, you can see the heavy and light spots. Yeah, I mean, as, as painters, if, if you're doing a gloss uh, or a lacquered or a cleared car or anything, you, you've got the luxury of being able to flat and polish. Whereas with any sort of, any sort of like lesser gloss, like a satin or a semi-gloss, you, you can't touch it, so it's got to come out right. Now, do you um, do you have any cars personally? Um, not at the moment. Not at the moment. I've got I've got a, a Mark One Rabbit. A Mark One Rabbit. Yeah. Nice. Those yeah. are those. They call them swallowtails in the states. The the, uh, the, the early ones for the lights. Yeah. But yeah. The first one. Yeah. yeah. It's actually this actual car was um, was my aunt aunt's car. Really. And uh, she gave it to me in two thousand and four. Two door, four door. Two door. A two door early Eight rabbit. Eight hundred GCI. Really? Yeah. Wow. With miles red. Um, really? But I've I've always promised to restore it and show it to her. She's eighty five now. You, so. get, you better <laughs> chop chop. You better, you better get yeah. to work. She's uh she's still driving and everything. So I'm hoping, planning, I'm letting her take it out. So now one of the other things that's that, that's interesting is uh you, so you're a member of the German folk UK. I am. I am. Yeah. And how did that come about to be? Well, um, they they done like a group feature in Volkswagen back in the late nineties, ninety seven, I think it was, um, and there was John Canales, um, Hank Irvine, and then a few other guys, and um, uh, Mike. They, they all led the cars. It was about five or six cars. Um, I've always, I've always sort of swayed towards the resto car. Mm -hmm. thing uh, style myself um, and as soon as I opened that book and read it I, I was hooked and like you thought highly detailed and polished is the way you got to do it, it just just everything about them the, the original accessories the the way the cars sit the wheels just the the, the, the thing of getting a stock car slamming it and wheels and wheels and accessories yeah just that's it for me. So what's the car that you build for German folks? I built a Bahama Blue 64. That's a nice color, Bahama oh, Blue. It, yeah. yeah. Love it. It's it's uh, not a it's not a common color that you see a ton. I mean, especially 64s, yeah. most people mid years like that, they just painted them whatever. But some of the original original colors that you have like that, some of the blues, man, are just yeah. are super nice. So your car was left hand or right hand drive? Right drive. Right hand drive. So it was original UK car. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Bought off a friend. Um, and uh, yeah, so I did that and um, started messaging a couple of guys from uh, the States um, and Ari um, Arizona and California members. Mm -hmm. um, didn't really hear too much back. One of them, um, Quentin from Arizona, messaged back um, saying, oh, I, don't, I don't really know how to go about sort of making a, a chapter in another country. But unbeknownst to me, another guy from the, uh, from the UK was doing the same as me and talking to the white people, I guess. Um, and Darren became the first member um, and I shortly followed. And then how many how many members does GFK have here in the UK? Um, around 10 at the minute, I think. Yeah. Um, yeah. You guys, and so you guys, are you guys on display out here this this year at the show? James has got a, a 1980s, like a back to 89 car downstairs that he's just redone. Nice. Um, which is the Red Road stuff. And says the roadster red roadster yeah the um oh the red the carson top car yeah 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 i yeah. saw that yeah so james has just redone that but as for actual window cars not this year yeah yeah nice and so what's uh wh what are you currently working on your on your projects right now you're working on a 46. so um at the moment i've got 46 in uh a square back um and a gear for a 60 gear for in black and uh, so, so, <laughs> so you got a 60 gear convertible in black yep. and then you've got the you've got the um the 46 the 46 i'm assuming is gonna be a flat paint car yeah so that was a um it's turned out to be an american supplied car um supplied to a, an american serviceman who took it home so it was so it, but so th those were service cars service cars that were sent to the the, the states huh um i think i think 
I mean, look, we help, look, you and I, we helped the Germans get the factory. Our, our yeah. people yeah, exactly. helped the Germans exactly. get the factory back up and running. Yeah, and but, um, it was around 46. So, 46 was the first so they're really car. American-made cars. I mean, if we're going to be real about American, it. American, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, but so... The, my, my show, I think. Ivan Hurst, yeah. yeah, he was English. I think, yeah, yeah. I think he might have been English. I'm not 100%. I think he was in charge. Maybe. Uh, I mean, there was an American somewhere in the <laughs> chain of command, I'm sure. Uh, yeah, this, this, this car was the, it was the first year you could buy, um, purchase a car. And I, I, as, I can only assume the car, but we had to get home. And what color is it? it? So it should be black. Black. It should be same black. So, so have you? Then, since you start painting the cars, do you start researching the cars? Like very much, yeah. So I'm, now, split windows because you're a little OCD. Split windows. I, am, yeah. I see them gray, black, and brown. Yeah, it depends what color. Um, they was colored to whatever country they was going to. Really? Yeah. So American cars were all same black. Oh, uh, really? UK cars were um, army green. Yeah. I think Russian cars were. Uh, uh, like uh, maroon color, like purpley color. Yeah. French cars were um, a light blue, same. Um, but the funny, the, the cool thing about them is they all had um, different color floor pans and running gear. Oh, really? So the black ones, uh, the, the US cars, mm -hmm. all had olive green floor pan and running gear. Um, it's almost like a really early cow look. <laughs> yeah. Um, so French cars, the light blue, they would have had a. Uh, um, like a sandy beige floor pan of money gear. Really? Yeah, not that I've researched it or anything like that. You know, it's, uh, I've spent many hours on the <laughs> But it's, it, I mean, it, it's crazy, right, to, yeah. to figure out. Yeah. And did, does Volkswagen have records that go back that far? Yeah. They do. Well, uh, it, it, it's actually quite a lot of it on the sand. Um, you know, there's, thread, there's, there's threads on there and you, it's quite I mean, a lot of info. Yeah, there's there's things I've never heard of. I mean, I, I never knew that the splits were painted based on. Of of course, I'm not. I have a '51, but mine's yeah. being customized. Yeah. It's not. You know, they made a hundred thousand of '51. So if I go full custom and shave the dash, it doesn't matter. Right? Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. But you know, I never knew that the colors were based on. And and that was from what years up to? That was just the pre. Because the like in the '40s, what year did they start actually doing gloss paint? Uh, I didn't think they did. I don't think they done gloss until forty-seven or forty-eight. So forty-seven or forty-eight. Forty-seven yeah, actually. But I think of, I think my car may have been uh, factory Bordeaux red. I'm not sure. When I got it, it was black and it's it was. Awesome color. Yeah, a Bordeaux red's great. And the problem was there was a, there was a, there was a period there in the mid two thousands where everybody was everyone covered. doing Bordeaux red. So I think one of one of the first ones I remember is um, John Jones. Mm -hmm. he, he converted one to white and drive. Yeah put it on air and was scraping it on the floor I think. Yeah, I wonder what happened to that car. I think that I think someone got that car and fixed it. Right, yeah. Um, <laughs> I mean it, 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 you listen, there's a, there's a lot of them out there. People could do whatever they want to them. Um, but yeah, the Bordeaux red is just a it's a killer color. Yeah. I like it, split colors like my favorite split color is the azure I think azure blue. Azure blue. That's yeah. Randy Gates car. That yeah, Rand, yeah, yeah. Randy yeah. Gates car is the reason why I got the Type 34, the gray one. I don't know if you're familiar with it. Yeah, I know, yeah. I know. I want to test drive it when I go there. <laughs> um, but uh, Randy Gates' car is the car that motivated me to do what I did with the Ghia. Right. And, uh, it, you know, because I thought, what would be more rare than a split? And then what would be what wheels would be more rare than gas burners? And so I did the Cosmics on the split right. or on the, on the Type 34. And it's funny because there's like Randy Gates, when I met him, I said, hey man, your car inspired me to build the Ghia. And then when I met um, uh, Elliot Vansel, he said, dude, your car cost me <laughs> hundreds of thousands of dollars. Because when he saw the Ghia, the Ghia motivated him to build something. Yeah. And then, you know, and it's funny because we go into this conversation back and forth, like built or bought, right? And I work for all the money that I pay to have cars built for. So I'm working for it just as much as the guy that's doing the work. And, and there's like a, there, there's a double edged sword there, right? You need the guys that, that can afford to pay you what you do. Cause your, your buddies in your neighborhood aren't going to pay the bills. You know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. And so exactly. there's, there's this, this, this dichotomy. And usually it's like, if you can't pay someone to do it, then you are upset about the guy who can. But if you can't pay someone to do it, you probably have the time. 
Right. And usually yeah. I think that's what ends up happening because everything comes down to time, money, equations. Yeah. Yeah. And maybe it's just me being defensive about me having a car. But I like here's the here's an example. I bought a painted Type 34 Ghia, painted much like the one down here that I was about to steal. And <laughs> it needs some paint touch up. And I had a full restoration project. And I said, this full restoration project needs to get sold because this car is three steps further. Yeah. It has been sitting in my garage on the rack. I've got most of the parts to put it together. I haven't touched the car since I pulled it in the garage. And it comes down to available time, right? Yeah. I mean, all of a sudden my wife tells me I need to start a podcast and stuff. So I started a podcast. Oh, and she said, you, what are you starting a podcast for? You don't have enough time already. So, you know, it's one of those things where I keep looking at the car thinking, okay, do I, do I build it? Do I send it to somebody to build it? Or do I sell it and just keep leveling up and buy myself a finished car? And, 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 that, and then that's where the, the, the difficult struggle comes in, right? In the car hobby, like you never want, you want to build your own stuff. You don't want somebody saying like, oh, that's so-and-so's old car. You know what I mean? Yeah. There's some yeah. of that street cred that's there. And I think the smart money is always to buy it done because you're getting it at a discount, a sizable discount. But the, the, the car guy in you is like, nope, I'm going to build it my way and do these things. Yeah. You know, what's, uh, what's next on the plan for you besides the GTI? You have anything that you're slated that you'd like to, like to get on with? Or the GTI is a, it's probably a pretty overwhelming project if you're going to restore that thing. Um, it's, it's a bit rusty. <laughs> Being a UK car. See, when, when uh, you tell me a car is 20 years old, you know what I see in my head? I see the dash is cracked, all yeah. the rubber is shrunk and uh, cracked. Um, Other than that, back, yeah knock all that stuff off, scuff it and shoot it and you're yeah. good. That's that's how we get them. You know what I mean? Dash is, a, dash is fine actually. My, my <laughs> auntie, is perfect. Um, my aunt um, garaged it its whole life. Um, and still got rusty. And drove it in driving gloves. Um, so there's nothing on the steering wheel? No, no. She never drove it over 60 mile an hour. Um, wow. So yeah. But the day I got it, I raced my wife in uh, BMW. We had to clear out all the carbon. That's yeah. what I tell my uh, wife. Yeah. We just got to, clean yeah. the, got to clear the carbon out yeah. real quick, baby. You, you let it build up. <laughs> Why are you driving like that? Just trust me here. Yeah. But so you've got that. I mean, what if you were to build your ultimate car? You you have blank slate. You're going to get it. And it's like bus selector, bug selector, type three selector. You just right. go, you're going to build whatever you want. What do you want to build? So uh, so a few years back, I had a, a right hand drive standard. Um, Bug, they only for the UK. They only made uh, ten. What um, what year? Uh, it was August '57, so '58 car. So big window. Very first of big windows, cable brakes, um, and is a very very special car. Very rare. Um, they made ten between August '57 and August '64. They made ten standards for the UK. Um, factory, because that... factory right hand drive is a big deal in the UK, right? Yes, yes. Like uh, most of the cars that'll be at the show today, what percentage is right hand drive? What percentage is left hand drive? Um, if you had to guess, inside the show, probably fifty fifty, I would imagine. But obviously, right hand drives are it's how we drive. So, but again, right hand drive cars are usually very rusty. Yeah, I see a lot of left hand drive stuff as I've been out there. Yeah, road. I mean, it's uh, especially. Split buses and bay windows and stuff like that. You know, it's um, if you want to get a bus or or a project that doesn't need as much work as a UK car, you, you go to the states. Yeah. Um, so yeah, there is a there is a lot of cars here. But so do you have? Do you got a line on a fifty eight? Are you trying no, to no, find no, a fifty eight standard? No, I did, I did have one, but it, it turned nigh impossible to find all the right parts. Um, yeah, so, I'm thinking to myself, like, were they just were they offering a standard yeah. until they burned through the oval window stuff, and then that was it, or what was the deal? I mean, split window stuff is cable breaks. Yeah, yeah, very, very early. You want to die? What's wrong with you? It, it was. Um, you just like I, it because it's rare. I, it's I was unique. just, I was just sort of getting away to say I found it a chore to drive. I found it hard to drive. Um, oh, it was running and driving when you got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lowered. Uh, like, what do you what do you have to pay for something like that out here? Um, that's I paid about seven thousand for it. Seven thousand bucks. Pants, yeah. Pants, How so. Oh, so that's ten thousand dollars. Let's yeah, just say ninety five hundred. So um, that car, you buy it like that. How rusty is it? Very, oh. very. But on the road, um, driving. I mean, that's like as long. I think that's that's the car guy justification. Like, I can drive the car. Like it's yeah, almost it's, done. It, you know what I mean? I think it got to a point where it was um, beginning to be unsafe. 
And how so, did the, uh, and I was going to say, how do the cable brakes work? That's got to be surprisingly really good. Really, uh, really, really good. Um, I don't know why, but that just was. Um, but it was it had a it had a non synchro gearbox and crunch in between every gear. I mean, I find it amazing that Volkswagen sold that stuff. I mean, in the States, yeah. all we ever got was deluxe Beetles. That was just a standard Beetle that we right. received there, which is why every VIN, every M plate I look at or under the hood code in, in the States, I don't see any different options or any of that stuff. They're all, the majority of them were sold right, right. out of the box deluxe. I think you'd have to right. maybe special order a standard in the States. Yeah, probably. I mean, I, I, was, I think um, it was the most basic car you could buy from VW here. And they was um, reps cars like. So oh, like a dealer rep. Yeah, you run around as a yeah. sales guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Interesting. Um, so this particular car was a, a building supplies reps car. Oh really? Yeah. Oh, so that was the car. Like, if you owned a business, like, hey, you got some sales guys. We have these. We have these Beetles. They normally sell for eight thousand. Yeah. This one's only four. Yeah. Four? That's a deal. Oh, yeah, exactly. Well, that. here's the wrench. What's a wrench for? Adjusting the brakes. Yeah. Like what? <laughs> Yeah. Um, so the, the, the car first got supplied to a, a building. Uh, so building was it supplies. logoed? Was it logoed? A logoed car? Yeah. Really? Yeah. So that would be kind of cool, right? A logoed cable brake standard. Yeah. Twelve hundred cc. Twelve twelve hundred cc. But after driving it for eighteen months, I, I quickly, um, I quickly learned I've got a soft spot for si early sixties cars. Yeah. Um, so yeah, my ultimate car would be a. Would be an early '60s rag, early '60s rag top. Yeah, and, and, and I do. Yeah, you know, I've, I've always had a thing about the color coded parts of a, of a '60s factory car, like the barrel green cars and and the surface cars and with the running board mats. And now, do you? Now that's a question. Now, since you've been a little bit of a researcher, the running board mats was that? Or, that's not ordered with the car, is it? Was it an option they would order uh, with the car? No, I don't think it was an option. They, they, Something uh, to do with the dealership after. You could color match it? Yeah, that was actually um, the first. So you have like Volkswagen color concepts, like uh, Golfs yeah. in the States, yellow with yellow leather seats and right. stuff like that. So that was the first ever color concept car that Volkswagen did. It was a 1961 um, bug. So what, they, they started to stop the color concepts at what point? Six months, they run for that's it. Yeah, yeah. So you, so if you find if you have an early '60 car, like a '60 rag, it could be matching like a color. Yeah, yeah. August, uh, I can say nothing. We're like nerd. Um, no, no, we're we're here to nerd out right now. We're here. <laughs> um, I, yeah, so. I, I used to think when I when I was so the, you remember you're talking to a guy who likes custom stuff, yeah, yeah. and I've never buried down on that kind of stuff. So if you see a car with a 65 with colored match running boards, that's not from the factory. That's, you said they only did that for a short period of time in, the six, in 1960 only? I think they, they did it for a few years. I think they've done it up to 63. But the, the August 60, so for the following six months. So you could um, order it that way? Yeah. And you'd, you would order it and color match would be color match fender beating? Yeah, so, so let's say a Turkish car mm -hmm. um, would have a... Como running balls, wind beating, sunroof cover. Um, and then they had a hydrate steering wheel uh, grab handle on the dash was blue. Um, very rare car. Really? Very rare car. Yeah. Um, and the barrel green cars were the same. And uh, pastel blue cars were the same. And ultimately your goal would be, would be to find a right-hand drive version of that? Not necessarily. Left-hand drive, though. So you don't get worried about driving a left no, no, car no, here? No, not after, no, not after uh, driving my 1303. Yeah. <laughs> well, even your 1303 was left-hand drive. That, that the one from California. Yeah, that was, yeah, that was a... So, I, you know, I would think, because there are a lot of people in, in the States that have right-hand drive cars, and I think, like, after a while it would become, like, a little bit annoying because you're on the wrong, you're on the wrong side for the way the traffic flows, and it's harder to see, yeah. like, left turns, which here I think would be right turns would yeah, be difficult. Yeah, I, I think the worst thing, I think the worst thing I've come across is... is if you're following a bus and it stops at a stop to let people on, you can't go around it because you can't see around it. Right, uh, right. So, so you have to sit there and patiently wait for the bus to move. Right. <laughs> no, I listen. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a, but, uh, last yeah. thing I want to do is get in ahead on it. Oh, you know, know, whilst you're sitting there, people are looking at your car. So yeah, you know, no, this it's, is it's not all bad. Well, that's so you've got plenty of cars in the queue, and Trailer Queen Restorations is your your shop name. Yeah. Um, yeah. 
what what's some of the like the most impossible thing you've had to paint that you'll if, is there been a car you sell never do another one again i think every time you do a bus you say that because the panels are it's just it's never just, ending. yeah i mean realistically you could probably do two bugs in the time of in one the bus. time of one bus and uh they were a lot of effort but you if you don't do one for a few years and go oh yeah i think that'd be why i'll do that nice but, <laughs> But no, I think um, I'm equally looking forward to it and not looking forward to painting the 46 in yeah. satin black, obviously. Yeah. So once it's done and it's perfect and out there, it's going to be amazing. And I think the technology has changed as far as paint technology, yeah, where the satin, nice. like, and I don't know how they painted the original satin. It would have probably been lacquer back in the day. Yeah, it would have been like cellulose. But it would have been, it, it wouldn't show handprints like today when people go, oh, just shoot just a base coat. But the base coat shows fingerprints yeah. all over it, right? Because it's got a bit, a, bit, a bit of a texture on it. Yeah. So now they've got matte finish clears That's for right, these yeah. ba cl base clears now. So it makes it a little easier for you because you can actually, can you actually color sand and buff? I guess it would just be color. Well, you buff a little bit, right? For, yeah, on yeah, a no, matte clear. Can't, can't touch it. It was um, any, any sort of um, matte. Any sort of, yeah. There's no. Anything less than gloves. You can't polish because it will just go shiny. Right. So, you, so you would so you would scuff it if you needed to fit to like a uh, if, something to clear. If something if something went wrong, if you got a bit of dirt or you know silicon fish eye or whatever in the in the panel, you you'd have to do it again. Where where do you get the best parts from for um, fitting bodies? Well, BBT have just put out some really nice wings. So the ones that you've seen from there were real good quality. Really good, yeah, really good. Um, I think they're just producing rear wings at the moment. Wolfberg West floor pans. Uh, so yeah, there's, you sort of go to them from different people who, who sort of make the, the best panels. Um, there's a lot of nice stuff being made um, by Wolf and Mika Burton and, um, and Finland and yeah, them sort of places. So there's some really good quality stuff at the moment. So what? Where do you think? Do you think your shop will always just stay you and your wife and not get much bigger than that? Um, I mean, the demand's got to be getting crazy. Where like you, you could use a good hand. Yeah, I mean, I, I've I've had several people. I live in a very small town in in the west bottom part of England. Um, oh, out by the, the by uh, cool. uh, Liverpool area. No, 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 right, right down south. Oh, um, okay. So it's, it's you like how I try to act like I know where I'm at. Like, oh, yeah, yeah, you yeah, must yeah. be That's, talking about Liverpool. There, it's where everyone comes to surf. Yeah, I was really. looking at a map ten minutes ago, <laughs> so I, I looked at that and I thought west. Yeah, but that's east actually, so never mind. But it's west, but then you've got to go right down. Right. Well, yeah. Uh, to, to the very bottom <laughs> it's, point. It's southwest. Yeah. 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 <laughs> um, so yeah, I mean, it's very hard to find. I've had several people come to try out, but I've never found anyone. And what's how far is your shop from here? Like, what's the drive from here? Uh, it's a four-hour drive. Four-hour drive. Yeah, I drive here. And, it's and how many in. lanes are the road? Three. Mo yeah, so it's a freeway, not a motorway. Okay, three each direction. Yeah. So, uh, so it's actually like a proper highway. It is freeway. until until the last hour, and then it's country lane. And then it's two lanes. No one. Country lane. Oh, one lane each way. Yeah, with fields on either side. I thought you were talking one lane, and I thought this this, this must be kaz kamikaze. Oh, oh no, I'm oh, two lanes. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, one in each time. I'm a look. I'm a little slow. We we, <laughs> we talk different over there, but uh, no, I think it, I you know I've, I definitely have seen plenty of your builds, and I think you do some some really top quality work. And and my reason for coming out here to the Volksworld show is to get some of the people that are out here recognized in the hobby that uh, that are. That are doing big things, man. And uh, anything you wanted to touch base on before we wrap it up? You think uh, we missed? No, not really. <laughs> so if people want to get at you, want, want to see what you're up to, how do they get in touch uh, with yeah, you? Yes, so I'm on um, Instagram as Trailer Queen Restos. Okay. And uh, we have a Facebook page as well. Um, and you update work that you're doing on there? Yeah, yeah, from time to time. Nice. I, I don't sort of overload, but. Right. Nice. Every now and then. Well, that's rad, man. Well, I appreciate you for coming in and sitting oh, down with us, oh, man. And uh, yeah. it, it's been, it wasn't that hard, was it? It wasn't that bad. No, no, it's pretty nervous. cool. Well, cool. Well, I Thanks appreciate very much. Th nice. Thanks for coming on, brother. No worries. Well, if you guys like that podcast and you want to support Let's Talk Dubs, go to letstalkdubs.com. And don't forget, One Crazy Weekend is happening this year. So sign up today because the rooms book out quick. Go to letstalkdubs.com. 
click on the one crazy weekend tab and you'll be able to pre-register for your room get your smoking deal from the orleans hotel and casino and be part of the greatest strip cruise of all all volkswagens all the time so and make it to the show but you want to support the podcast go to let's talk dubs.com pick out some merch and we'll get it shipped out to you guys right away i actually have some hoodies being made just in time for spring and summer so <laughs> we can, we'll get into that later um but i've got some uh pretty cool designs coming out to hear your name on let's talk dubs make sure you give us a five-star review on apple Podcasts or even spotify and or you can just pick out some merch and you get a shot on the podcast appreciate the support guys this week shout out goes to sean barry for supporting the podcast appreciate him i know he's coming to the show as well so i'm excited to have all these people that show their support and uh don't miss one crazy weekend you will be sorry that i assure you so it's gonna be a rager happening here in vegas october 6th and 7th do not forget, go sign up, book your room now. The bookings will not be available after September. So book your rooms now. Guys, I'm cranking away at getting podcasts recorded, putting them in the books, man, and there's lots more to come. So appreciate you guys listening. Do me a favor and share this podcast with everyone you know. We love seeing the podcast grow. And since I've been asking you guys to share it, it's been growing. So keep sharing the podcast. It's going to keep growing. And, uh, bringing a lot of good VW content to those guys out there. Coming up in the next couple of weeks is going to be uh, Linebug, Craig with Linebug. I've got Dave Andrews from the uh, MP Days and much, much more. So be on standby. Tons of good stuff coming out. And who knows, man, I got some, I may just throw out a bonus episode. Until next week, guys, later. <laughs>